beautiful day. Cold but beautiful. So kind of a overview. Um, I know I failed to explain kind of the whole system just since it's my world and uh, need to remember not everybody knows what the heck I'm talking about. So that's a sea chest there and that is a sea chest there meaning it's a big valve actually kind of see it build is super dirty right now that valve is open to the ocean these pipes all of these pipes you can see yeah that side that side one going over there up top these are all part of the seawater circulation system and that's one component of a larger system called the RSW or refrigerated seawater system. The point of that is to preserve our catch. Essentially we add seawater to the fish hold which is behind this bulkhead here. Uh, hatches are actually frozen shut otherwise I'd open it up for you. Put seawater into that fish hold and there's a refrigeration compressor located in the stern or the lazarette. Then that is connected to a set of seawater chillers, which are two basically heat exchangers up on top of the wheelhouse. Anyways, long story short, this is all the pumps and the plumbing required to circulate that seawater. And we can do two things with it. Well, kind of three now. These pumps are redundant. This is the port pump, starboard pump, 15 horsepower, 30 horsepower, 6 inch in, 5 inch out, centrifugal pumps. They're redundant with an isolation valve, so in case one of these fails, we've got the same one on that side. The point of this system, just teeing in right here to the circulation piping, it's coming over here, we have an isolation valve here. Follow that run there, goes up to the back deck, and there's going to be a hose on the end of that termination where it comes out of the deck. So the point of this was to help us wash fish out when we're trawling, and it'll also be really beneficial when we're salmon tendering. This will basically be an infinite source of seawater for a big washdown pump. And you can see I'm connected to that sea chest isolation valve here and here is the valve for the three inch piping run. I'll be able to isolate that from the recirculation piping which will be on that side so I'll be able to pump an infinite amount of seawater up to the deck and I'll also be able to circulate my chilled water and continue to chill so that's really important uh, before if I wanted to send seawater to the back deck, I had to shut down my chiller and open a series of valves and it was just kind of a pain in the butt and cumbersome. Whereas this way, I'll be able to do both. Um, eventually, I'll give you a bigger tour of the chillers and just the system overall. Um, that's kind of a primer. So, hope that helps. We're back again. <laughs> Next step, I'm gonna cut what's called a donut. Uh, made that one, but the perimeter isn't quite big enough, so we're gonna make one with a two inch perimeter now. Um, good practice whenever you do a deck penetration, you can see over here that one has one already. So, laid it out. This is the outside diameter of my pipe. About three and a half inches, might cut that a little proud. Center punch the center, and this is a circle whiz or plasma whiz from Flange Wizard for my plasma cutter. Uh, pretty happy with it so far. Kind of had to get used to it at first, but I uh, think I got it down.
Was a little high. Torch was a little high, but I mean, that's hard to beat. Way better than I could do by hand. Circle is. Flange was pretty cool. So, this step, I'll try and get some better lighting in here, but made a little circle cut out, just a piece of paper, used a compass, drew the uh, outer diameter of the pipe, about three and a half inches. And out of that, I got a center point reference. And I guess I should mention that uh, obviously we've got that pipe down. Uh, how I established that location, I just put some straight edges on the outside of the pipe, made a few tick marks, and it's pretty close. So that's going to be my center point. I've got like a 16th inch uh, drill bit on here. I'm going to through drill. I'm going to go check it out on the top deck, make sure that I'm actually in the right place. <laughs> the advantage of just doing a small hole to start is uh, it's easy to fill. I mean, I'm pretty darn confident that I'm in the right place, but I uh, still don't trust myself. If it turns out it's good, then we'll uh, burn the hole in with the plasma cutter. The advantage of using a small drill bit is uh, they go through pretty quick. Kind of cool. Steel's from 1967 original that's uh, coal tar epoxy the black paint and the green paint is uh, Devo 302 just put that up there all right let's go see if I'm right or if I'm totally wrong perfect really there's our hole it's gonna be enough room to clear this pipe and weld a doubler plate uh, we're gonna have to probably trim the back side of the doubler or the donut but that's okay so uh, Probably gonna scribe a line, grind off the paint. Uh, I'm not sure about plasma cutting through that. And I'll get back to you. Well, screw up, but I think I would have caught it. <laughs> Got our compass here going into our hole. And I'm scribed to the OD of three inch schedule 80 pipe, which is right about three and a half inches. Probably cut that a little proud. I gave myself about an eighth of an inch of wiggle room. That's going to be our cut that we're going to make. And our donut's going to sit out here, but obviously we're not going to cut that part of the deck plate. So we'll get that ground off, ready for plasma cutting. You can see, this steel's from 1967, and look what kind of condition it's in. Because it's almost two fingernails thick of paint. So, steel boat, constant maintenance, but as you can see, I mean, that's pretty darn good. It's brand new. Lots of fitting. This is gonna be the through deck penetration. I think that's about where we're gonna wanna lay. This is gonna have to come off and get shortened, but to do that, I've got to shut the water pump off, drain it, and uh, with welding, that's not a good idea. I want water in case we get a fire, but we'll do that after. So, the plan, we're going to tack this where it needs to be. Probably put three or four tacks on it. We don't really want this thing shifting. 
and then we'll pull this assembly down thread this vertical through this hole and then uh, weld this out up on the back deck I cut this hole a little oversized intentionally so we can uh, thread this out of here so we'll uh, get the suitcase ready to go and throw some tacks and get moving To go put it downstairs. It was a little hot. I was welding that in position. Could have turned down my heat about 5 amps or so, but it'll work. All right, so pretty good progress yesterday. Although you can see, overshot my hole a little bit. Um, a lot of that was just due to the fact that this deck has a camber to it. So I didn't quite cut that hole in the deck exactly where this pipe needs to terminate so got a little bit of a gap there I'm gonna get the suitcase wire feeder up here and I'm also gonna cut out a backing plate an aluminum backing plate stick that on the back side I'm gonna fill that gap with uh, wire feeder it's not gonna be incredibly structural but I'll grind it back out and lay a nice 6010 bead over that uh, using aluminum because obviously mild steel doesn't stick to aluminum so it's kind of a good option when you're doing pad welding or gap filling like this here's where that comes through on the underside and you can see I think that's a good angle you can see that gap so here's the aluminum backing plate more or less uh, air compressors charging right now so that backer, I'm gonna fit kind of right up in there. And I'm just gonna use that as kind of a backing pad to uh, shoot some MIG wire into. So I've gotta figure out a way to uh, support that up there. I think I can wedge it or something. All right, we got the wire feeder set up and I got my backing plate. Now I'm gonna just start building that up. Now, let me keep welding here for just a minute. Okay, now we're gonna go move our backing plate. Girlfriend was nice enough to go down below. She's my fire watch. Going okay? Okay. I'm gonna move that backing plate. I gotta go down there. Just about got that gap filled. All right, we get our gaps filled. Not beautiful. That'll work. 
going to give me enough of a back in to uh, run a pass with 6010 and then we'll do a 7018 cap. 6010, 8 inch at uh, 88 amps. Try not to do that. Okay, get ready. Welding. How you doing? Doing good, okay? Doing okay? Okay. in all right backside kind of lost the puddle for a minute it's just an awkward position but and a radius that yeah stand by you can see radius the inside of that donut I know that's a crappy cut but that's a really nice cut I'm going to put a series of tacks. Again, this deck is not very flat. I'm going to do the best I can. Pretty happy with that fit up. I don't want to introduce twist into that. And I also do not want this thing to move and lift up off the deck. So I'm just going to do some tacks here. If I have to, I can wedge it down. Small 
Altax. I want to minimize the heat input too.
check on my fire watch. Okay. Take a break, let this cool. big thing you just want to watch your heat input you don't want to get this thing molten down underneath it's coal tar paint down there and it will burn all right let's uh, run a bead here that one's gonna be pretty fun. Pretty sure I'll be able to get in there all right, so. Might even switch to uh, 6010, although I think that's unnecessary. Might turn my heat down, but let's keep letting this thing cool for a sec. That's as far as I'm gonna take that. Those welds around that pipe are not pretty. So I was using 332, 7018, but good enough. Got about three passes on it. This is gonna be a pipe hanger. Got to put pipe hangers on everything. You don't want things to vibrate down in the engine room. So I just traced that. Pretty simple. Gonna nip that with the plasma cutter and probably use the wire feeder to get that on there and that's going to go down below in the engine room and i guess now is also a good time to uh i guess kind of give like a little rundown of the equipment i'm using um using an xmt 304 hooked up to that 12 vs suitcase over there when i do wire feed and i'm running uh washington alloy I believe it's the E71 TGS gasless uh, flux cord MIG wire. Um, good for stuff like this, single pass. It's uh, not really rated for material much thicker than 3/16. Of course, this is about quarter and 3/16 on the clamp, but uh, works really well. Not a multi-pass wire. That's why I've been stick welding the pipe. But uh, overall, pretty pretty darn happy with it just makes stuff like this so much easier just jump on the wire feeder and i misspoke there a little bit uh the wire is actually the er71t-gs uh, flux core gasless mild steel mig wire and uh again it's a single pass wire um not designed to weld uh, material like much thicker than 316 it's actually 316 is the maximum degrees. thickness but for this type of thing, works really good. Gasless MIG wire, uh, you can just put it right in the suitcase. And it's a good fit. Again, uh, Washington Alloy. Want to get a coat of primer on that deck pass-through uh, before it rusts up. I mean, it will rust up instantly in a marine environment. Uh, so the paint that I'm using, kind of the gold standard for steel fishing boats up here. It's a uh, PPG 
Dimmit coat 302H, two part epoxy, uh, resin, and cure. Uh, five to one, it's either five to one or 91, don't quote me on that, but it's a two part epoxy resin, zinc rich, high solids, uh, been around forever, works really well. So we get that mixed, and uh, yes, you gotta mix part A to part B. Um, it's been horror stories of boats that have uh, had their crew painted up and uh, what do you know it never dries because the paint was never mixed and it will never cure. All right we'll get that mixed up. All right that's what it looks like. It's green. Mixed up even a little too much but it's all right. And we'll let that kind of kick for a few minutes as it is an epoxy. Um, get a nice coat on there and probably not going to be able to film as I'm painting but uh, get back with you once we get the paint on there. Alright so you can see mixed up way too much. <laughs> a little bit goes a long way with this stuff but it's good paint. Probably put another coat on there before I take off for tonight. Um, it's going to be pretty chilly tonight but it'll still clear or excuse me cure because um, it is an epoxy. Uh, nice thick coat. It's part of a three paint, three coat system. I'll follow up this with a high solids, um, kind of a matte coat, and then we'll do a gloss finish. But uh, for right now, we'll just put primer on it. Probably uh, get it all painted out here in the spring once the weather warms up. And you might be wondering why this does not have any paint on it. It's because that's stainless steel whereas the pipes mild steel uh, did that intentionally um, in a marine environment on threaded connections typically what uh, corrodes first is your threads because it's the thinnest part so stainless hopefully should last for quite some time paint's already starting to cure that makes it pretty hot meaning uh, put a lot of cure into it so Pretty happy with that. Again, we're going stainless on stainless. So we got to be kind of careful that we don't gall the threads. That sucks. I'm using Teflon tape. This is kind of my new technique for pipe threads because just had too many of them leak, and I always get screwed up on the direction. I think this is the right way. <laughs> and nope, going the wrong way. Duh. If anyone has hints for remembering, let me know. <laughs> I know it's dumb. These are such big threads too, because it's three inch. All right, it's about three, four wraps. seal which is a PTFE uh, thread dope pipe dope same deal kind of my new favorite here everything getting cold fingers included Cool. 
And it's gonna get all over my nice paint job, but you know what? That's okay. Almost like I designed it that way to give myself enough room. Oh. Got really lucky that I didn't nick any threads too. Put some gloves on. Gas pipe wrench. This is going to be a fun one. All right. Probably be able to get one more rotation. So, there we go, 3 inch stainless steel 30490, that's going to go to a king nipple and 3 inch hose. Pretty nice sunset up here in Kodiak, there's the windmills, not sure if you can see them. Pretty cold, nice day though, pretty lucky to live here. <laughs> 